Good morning, everyone. In this week's Torah portion, we read about the mirrors, the copper mirrors that the women contributed to the Mishkan, to the tabernacle. And in the olden days, they would polish their copper and make mirrors out of it. And when they needed copper, the women brought their copper mirrors. And Moshe said, I don't want to accept it because this is an item used for vanity, for beauty, and it doesn't belong in the holy tabernacle. And God said, on the contrary, they're the most precious of all the gifts. And the Torah goes on to say that they use the copper mirrors of the women to make the wash basin that the high priest would use every day when he entered into the tabernacle to do his service in the temple. And the question is, why was this the most precious of all gifts that God desired more than anything else? So our rabbis explained that when the Jews were in Egypt, they were enslaved, the boys were being drowned in the Nile, and the men had given up hope on the Jewish future. And they didn't want to procreate, but the women understood that if we don't procreate, or we don't have children, we don't have the next generation, we won't be able to go free from Egypt because there won't be a nation to redeem. So they would use the mirrors to beautify themselves to engage and entice their husbands to procreate with them. And therefore God said these mirrors were used for a holy purpose and they should be used for the wash basin. But the question is why the wash basin? It could have been used in many other items in the tabernacle. And perhaps the answer is as follows. You know, every day we say a morning prayers and we give a list of blessings to God. We thank God for our clothing. We thank God for standing erect. We thank God for walking on dry land. We thank God for opening our eyes that we can see. But you know what the very first blessing is? <clears throat> thank you, God. Blessed are you, God, King of the universe, who gives understanding to the rooster to distinguish between night and day. And the question is, in the olden days, people would wake up by the rooster's crow. So they thank God for the rooster's understanding to distinguish between day and night. But today we don't get up with rooster's crow. Why do we still thank God for the rooster? I saw a beautiful answer, and the answer is when the rooster gets up, it doesn't just get up, but it gets up with a song, with a niggin, with joy, it sings, kukurikuku. And therefore the lesson is like the rooster, no one knows what the day is going to bring, what lies ahead, but we have to wake up with optimism, with hope, with faith, with trust in God that it's going to be a blessed day. And perhaps this is why the Kohen began his service with the copper laver and wash basin donated by the women. Why? Because the women, by using their mirrors to beautify themselves and engage with their husbands, demonstrated trust and faith in God that things will be good. And therefore the Kohen begins his service like every Jew begins their daily service of God, with that trust in Hashem. And when we wash our hands in the morning, we know, like the Kohen knew, that it's going to be a blessed day. I'm standing in a wedding tent. Here we're going to have a wedding today at Palm Beach Synagogue. And... I'm thinking about the fact that every wedding ends with the breaking of a glass. Why the breaking of a glass? So you know when you look at what's going on now on the border of Ukraine, all the tension and the fear and the anxiety of what will happen there. And you know our daughter Malko made seven different trips to Ukraine as a girl to help the children in the orphanages there. There are many children who are in orphanages because their parents were killed in other wars. And my daughter and her friends are in touch with these girls in the orphanages. They did a Zoom call with them this week. And what they're doing in these orphanages right now is they're stockpiling food and getting ready to go into a bomb shelter in case there's a war and preparing water and batteries and sleeping bags, not knowing what's gonna happen. And this past week, there was a wedding the Chabad Rabbi Rebetzin, Rabbi Moshe Miriam Moskowitz, who live in Kharkov, Russia, which is 25 miles from the Russian border, where over 100,000 troops and tanks are amassing. Their daughter was engaged to a boy from Israel. And the wedding was last week. And many of the family members said, let's do the wedding in Israel because of what's going on in Ukraine right now. How could you have a wedding? But the Rabbi and the Rebetzin said, we raised our daughter here in Ukraine. This is our home. This is our community. And we're going to have the wedding here in Kharkov, Ukraine. And even though there's so much fear and, and uncertainty in the region, and it was so difficult, they prepared a beautiful wedding for 500 people and celebrated in the Coral Synagogue of Kharkov. 
The rabbi said, my job as a rabbi is to give encouragement, to give hope, to give faith to people. If I go off to Israel and leave the community here, what message does that send? And thank God it was a beautiful wedding as the rabbi and Rebetzin walked their daughter down to the chuppah in Kharkov, Russia, 25 miles from where 100,000 troops are amassing on the border. And that's where we break a glass. We break a glass at a chuppah to say that despite the joy we're experiencing now, there's brokenness in other parts of the world and we have to heal that brokenness. And we have to have joy and optimism that we, through our union, will be able to help repair some of the brokenness in the world and bring joy to others. And Jews around the world think of one another. And when a Jewish couple gets married in Palm Beach, Florida with all of the feelings of joy and bliss and the peace and the serenity of being in Palm Beach, Florida, our hearts and minds are with our brothers and sisters, wherever they may be, including the Ukraine, over 100,000 Jews, and praying for them and thinking about them and hoping with faith and optimism that God willing, all of this will be averted and there will be only peace and tranquility in that region. Have a wonderful day.